Hi everybody, and welcome to My Friend the Reader Book Haul Edition. So, I haven't done a book haul yet. I don't buy huge amounts of books. I get a lot of my, uh, at least physical books. Uh, I get a lot of uh, e-books from my Kobo um, and, uh, in, and get books from the library. That's usually where I get my reading material. Uh, but I did get a few books recently and I just wanted to talk about them. Uh, I guess the first uh, two I'm going to talk about are two e-books that I got. Uh, if people saw my just previous uh, video where I talked about what had happened with Juno DS and one of my recommendations out of that was let's go try to find some more female Latina writers uh, and so that we can diversify the experiences that we read about. So I got a couple from the library, I've downloaded onto my Kobo, I'm planning to read them in the next little, next little bit. Maybe at some point I'll give a review about them uh, but uh, I'll start with that. So the first one uh, and I, I'm just reading the Goodreads description of it, is called In the Time of Butterflies by, by Julia Alvarez. <clears throat> Set during the waning days of the Trujillo dictatorship in the Dominican Republic in, the 19, in 1960, this extraordinary novel tells the story of the Maribel sisters, three young wives and mothers who are assassinated after visiting their jailed husbands. From the author of the How Garcia Girls Lost Their Accents comes the tale of courage and sisterhood set in the Dominican Republic during the rise of the Trujillo dictatorship. A skillful blend of fact and fiction in the time of butterflies is inspired by the true story of the three Maribel sisters who in 1960 were murdered for their part in an underground plot to overthrow the government. Alvarez breathes life into these historic figures known as Las Mariposas, or the Butterflies in the Underground, as she imagines their teenage years, their gradual involvement with the revolution, and their terror as their uh, dissentience is uncovered. Um, sounds great. Uh, I love uh, historical novels with a political bent. Uh, I think it's uh, especially... Um, uh, on point contrast to Juno Diaz, who also talks about the Dominican Republic experience. Uh, so I think it's a, a good counter to people who are looking to go beyond uh, the most famous of the Latino or Latin American or American, or sorry, Latinos of the United States authors. So that's a good start. The other one, and I think a friend of mine actually recommended this one to me, uh, is a book that was published just a few years ago called The Book of Unknown Americans by Christina Henriquez. A dazzling, heartbreaking page turner destined for breakout status, a novel that gives voice to millions of Americans as it tells the story of the love between a Panamanian boy and a Mexican girl, teenagers living in an apartment block of immigrant families like their own. After their daughter, Mirabel, suffers a near-fatal accident, the Riveras leave Mexico and come to America. But upon settling in the Redwood Apartments, a two-story cinder block complex just off a highway in Delaware, they discovered that Mirabel's recovery, the piece of the American dream on which they pined in, their, in all their hopes, will not be easy. Every task seems to confront them with language, racial, and cultural obstacles. At Redwood, also lives Mayor Toro, a high school sophomore whose family arrived from Panama 15 years ago. Mayor sees in Maribel something others do not, that beyond her lovely face and beneath the damage she sustained is a gentle, funny, and wise spirit. But as the two, two grow closer, violence casts a shadow over all their futures in America. Again, sounds great. These both sound fantastic uh, insights uh, into the uh, Latin American experience in the United States, uh, dealing with, uh, I guess, well, the first one doesn't deal with uh, the America, the United States per se, but this one does. Uh, so uh, definitely sounds captivating as well. So very much looking forward to both of these. Now, three more books that I actually bought physical copies of. Uh, the first is uh, two used books that I got. Uh, they're, I guess they're seconds, so they have the little dot here. Uh, Operation Shylock by Philip Roth. Uh, so um, Philip Roth is a, an, a, obviously one of the most highly 
regarded authors in 20th century American fiction. Uh, it took me a while to get into him. I tried reading American Pastoral, which was his Pulitzer winner, um, maybe 10 years back, and I really had problems getting into it. It took way too long to finish, and uh, I didn't enjoy it. Um, and I didn't understand what all the fuss was. And then in the midst of the election, the American election 2016, I decided to read uh, The Plot Against America. Uh, and if anyone has read this before or knows the plot, the idea, it takes place in 1940 United States. Um, uh, specifically, uh, Charles Lindbergh, who is a Nazi sympathizer, uh, runs against Roosevelt, who's going for an unprecedented third term. So this is a, an alternative history, if you haven't got that yet. Uh, and, uh, and Charles Lindbergh, the aviation hero, wins the election. And you can imagine the, the kinds of ramifications it has for Jews in the United States uh, and, and the United States involvement in the Second World War. It was fantastic. And in the context of Trump running for president, who at that point, now no one thought was actually going to win, uh, it was, uh, in, it, it revealed interesting parallels. I'm sure parallels I think Roth has commented on wished weren't there, but obviously they did. Uh, they were. So, uh, so anyways, I started to like Roth a little more. Uh, last year I read or I listened to the audiobook for I Married a Communist. Uh, again, fantastic. Uh, Roth has a great uh, sense of humor. His, uh, his writing has this like acerbic quality to it uh, and it, it's joyful to read. And so I will go back and reread American Pastoral, but in the meantime, I picked up Operation Shylock and I'll just read this, uh, and try this humorous uh, description. In this fiendishly imaginative book, which may or may not be fiction, Philip Roth meets a man who may or may not be Philip Roth because someone with that name has been touring Israel promoting a bizarre reverse exodus of the Jews. Roth is intent on stopping him, even if that means impersonating his own impersonator. With excruciating suspense, unfettered philosophical speculations, and a cast of characters that includes Israeli intelligence agents, Palestinian exiles, an accused war criminal, and an enticing charter member of an organization called Anti-Semites Anonymous, Operation Shylock barrels across the frontier between fact and fiction, seriousness, and high comedy history and nightmare. This sounds fantastic. I'm probably going to pick this one up sooner than later. Uh, and, uh, and, and I'll give a review to see how good it is. The other one I picked up is one that is highly acclaimed and, and I see, I think, um, Sean the Book Maniac uh, on Booktube is currently doing a buddy read with this and that is Maggie O'Farrell, This Must Be The Place. Now, I just uh, listened to her uh, recent memoir called I Am, I Am, I Am. Super powerful tale of several near-death encounters that she had. And it was um, riveting and painful and raw and anyways, it's a great book. So I figure I should pick up some of her fiction. And this is one that's highly recommended. So I'll read the description. Daniel Sullivan leads a complicated life. A New Yorker living in the wilds of Ireland, he has children in California he never sees. A father in Brooklyn he loathes, and his wife, Claudette, is a reclusive ex-film star given to pulling a gun on anyone who ventures up their driveway. Together, they have made an idyllic life in the country, but a secret from Daniel's past threatens to destroy their meticulously constructed and fiercely protected home. Shot through with humor and wisdom, this must be the place, is an irresistible love story that crisscrosses continents and time zones as it captures an extraordinary marriage and an unforgettable family with wit, humor, and deep affection. Again, sounds great. It sounds like a summer read, so I'm probably going to pick it up over the summer at some point if I have a bit of time uh, to, to read it then. And the last one, just one that I picked up today, very hard to find, and this is Salman Rushdie's Shame. Uh, this was his third book. I think Grimace is his first book, Midnight's Children, which is most 
it's mostly regarded as his best book, the one that won the Ban Booker, uh, was his second. And this was his uh, the book that he read. At, he wrote after that. And Shane was also shortlisted for the Booker. It's uh, often considered his second best book. Um, and some people suggest it's his last great book. Uh, I have read a few Salman Rushdie. I read Midnight's Children, which is one of my favorite books of all time. Uh, it, I, I find it it's both in terms of its writing, its themes, its exploration of of Indian history from independence to the emergency it was so powerful. I learned so much and I was captivated by it. Um, the Satanic Verses, which is the book that uh, got him uh, in exile and the fatwa from the Iranian government, is probably an overrated book and I think got most of its attention largely because uh, of the consequences that Rushdie actually faced uh, as a result of writing it. I didn't think it was as, as captivating. It felt messy. Um, read it several years ago, I think maybe like 15 years ago and uh and i don't remember anything about it but i remember it being messy and not necessarily as um as engrossing as some suggested uh and i read harun in the sea of stories which is her his lovely uh children's book um that uh, i read as a young kid my dad bought it for us and we would read it together and again that's a fantastic book if you have young children and they're you know they're I guess eight nine years old it's it's a great book to read to them uh, so shame I'll read the brief description the novel that set the stage for his modern classic the satanic verses Shane is Salman Rushdie's phantasmagoric epic of an unnamed country that is not quite Pakistan in this dazzling tale of an ongoing duel between the families of two men one a celebrated wager of war, the other a debauched lover of pleasure. Rushdie brilliantly portrays a world caught between honor and humiliation, shamelessness, shame, the roots of violence. Shame is an astonishing story that grows more timely by the day. All right, so it's a nice short one, actually, compared to a lot of his books, just under 300 pages. Hopefully, I'll pick that up soon. Uh, anyways, that's my short book haul. Uh, if you have any questions or you want to check out... Uh, uh, these books, I'm going to have links below. I'm also going to have a link for a, a, a recent article about Salman Rushdie dealing with how his politics changed as a result of exile. I, it was came out a couple of years ago. I thought it was a fantastic insight in terms of how someone's very painful and traumatic life events changes your writing. Uh, and, uh, and it's worth picking out, taking a look at as well. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you and see you next time.